This is Kiara, one of the female cheetahs at Running Wild Cheetah Conservation. She's the best hunter they've got. They often take her to the game reserve next door to practice. Even better, she and Abby tolerate each other and she loves the cubs. She's not related to the cubs, but we still call her Auntie Kiara. Gets along with Abby, loves the cubs. That's the formula we need to help teach the cubs what and how to hunt. Why have Kiara teach them to hunt rather than their mom, Abby? Because Abby had a portion of her hip removed when she was a cub due to an injury. Look how she swings her leg when she walks. To avoid injury, she's not allowed to hunt. Abby and the cubs are harness trained to safely escort them to and from the game reserve. Once the coast is clear, the harnesses are removed. This is Kimmy and Kaiser at five months old on one of their training walks. Abby is not far behind. <laughs> Kiara has been on several hunts for the cubs, but not actually with them. She's willing to share her prey with the cubs and even Abby. In the wild, cheetah cubs as young as six months old have been known to help mom dispatch prey that she's caught. But it's dangerous. As this National Geographic clip demonstrates of a mother cheetah struggling against a Grant's gazelle. Tragically, it resulted in a fatal wound. For the cubs' safety, it was decided to wait until the cubs were 10 months old before helping Kiara on a hunt. Up to that moment, the cubs were given ample experience in the game reserve next door. That included observing Auntie Kiara on hunts. Remember, the harnesses are temporary and for their protection. Kiara is the surrogate mom that's teaching the cubs the who, what, when, where, how of hunting prey. It's time for Kimmy and Kaiser to begin earning their meals. This game reserve has a variety of antelope on it. It also has more dangerous animals like wildebeest and zebra. It's one of the reasons for the harnesses to help target the right prey. The target for today's hunt? A South African native antelope known as the blessed buck. Kiara knows why she's here. She scans the horizon and notices movement. Both Kimmy and Kaiser follow her through the brush. The herd's in a panic. The hunt's begun. Kiara races ahead and captures one after a brief sprint. By the time we caught up, she was in a life and death struggle with it. Kiara missed the death grip, allowing the blessed bug to fight back. She holds tight, knowing there's help on the way. Kaiser joins the hunt, followed by Kimmy. The cubs focus their attack on the back legs, stretching him out, leaving the more dangerous front end to Kiara. This is the first time the cubs have encountered a live animal as prey. Much of their tactic and behavior are pre-programmed instincts. The rest will come from practice, experience, and their own way. And of course, observing Auntie Kiara. The three continue to struggle with the blessed buck. Cheetahs aren't powerful enough to disable an antelope this size by biting the back of its neck. Cheetahs asphyxiate their prey 
by pinching off the air supply of the trachea from a bite to the throat. Kiara needs to change her bite grip to the throat. That's Kimmy walking away from the hunt, but she soon returns. Being their first hunt, Kimmy is showing some apprehension and uncertainty. Her brother Kaiser is showing more confidence, wanting to end the hunt. With the cubs focusing on the rear, some damage has occurred to the blessed buck's back legs, limiting its ability to escape. Cheetahs are designed for great speed, but not great strength or endurance. With Kiara missing the death grip from the throat, Kiara gasses out and loses control of the blessed buck. Watch out, watch out. And Kaiser and Kimmy took over the hunt. It's getting away. Kaiser bravely does most of the work and gets the death grip on the blessed buck's throat. Kimmy still seems unsure, and Kaiser's having difficulty finishing it. It's a strong adult male blessed buck. Hang on, buddy. I think Kiara picked out an antelope more her size rather than ones for the cubs. Maybe Kiara can pick out a smaller one next time. To protect the cubs from injury and the prolonged suffering of the blessed buck, it was decided to end the hunt humanely as possible. Typically, cheetahs will drag their quarry away from the kill site into some shade. But the blessed buck was too heavy for the cubs to move. Kaiser needed rest and tries burying the carcass from vultures and other predators. He's trying to hide it. I have a genuine affinity for life in the living. 
There's one less life on this reserve, and I'm partially responsible. Unlike a caged match, we offered a fairer chance between predator and prey on this large game reserve. The battle tilts either way, and I've seen it. The balance between predator and prey has gone on for millennia. It's what keeps both sides healthy and prosperous. If I'm ever to rewild captive-born cheetahs, this is the most important survival attribute these cheetahs can learn. Avoiding other hostile predators will be a close second. The blessed buck was dragged to the nearest shady tree so the cubs and Kiara could feast on their prize. What's revealing to me is that these cheetahs target these antelope as prey and not the people standing around them. These captive cheetahs are used to seeing a variety of people caring for them. So when we take them out on a hunt, everyone is considered a member of this hunting coalition. The only concern is getting too close to the hunt or afterward when they're feeding. Like what I did trying to capture a close-up of the cubs feeding. Kaiser gave me the evil eye. Back off. This is mine and my sister's meat. With bellies full, hot, tired, and thirsty, the cubs and Kiara were ready to go home. One life was lost, but the cheetahs at this breeding and rewilding project live on. All that's left is to satisfy a thirst, sleep, digest, and prepare for the next hunt. This was hunted by uh, Kiara. Uh, what do you think, buddy? Let's see if they'll eat it. Kiara, Kimmy, and Kaiser. What do you think, buddy? It's Blessbuck. Now, he will eat Blessbuck if it's chopped up for him. I'm hoping he'll chew on it. There you go, buddy. Good boy. <laughs> there he goes. It's the other kind of meat. Hey, you go, buddy. Look, I'll hold it for you. Hey, buddy. I see my eating. Hey, Gabriel. Hey, buddy. He's purring. Come on, buddy. This was just killed uh, today by the cheetahs, the, the cubs. Eat it, buddy. It's truly a wild game animal. There you go, buddy. Good boy. Good boy. He's not a real fan of, of uh, bus bucks, so I'm trying to get him to eat it. I mean, he will eat it when it's in... Uh, block form I cut it off the bone I don't know why he's not eating this it's, not, it's absolute fresh I mean, you don't get fresher than this it's not even frozen buddy I'm not even frozen he's actually eating it that's good hey buddy here here I just gave him a little piece just now good night he has a taste of it this is really good for him too it's, uh, the skin and the fat and cartilage and all that uh, tissue in there it's just a uh, it's the full course meal for a cheetah you know I really don't like um, cutting all the skin and things of um, the food that I feed Gabriel uh, I think it's very important for their diet I mean, it's what it's natural right they're, they're eating that in the wild so uh, that's what I want him doing so good he's gotten into it he's gonna, oh, he's gonna relax good now he's gonna relax good boy I'll hold it here for you this is what Gabriel would be if he was you know, could be released out in the wild, which he can't, by the way. He's got a bad spine. Uh, he's small. His tail's small. Uh, I don't want him uh, running full speed with his back. I mean, you can see the little notch there on his back there just from the, the video. Um, but I do like it sharing what a wild meal would be like with Gabriel. I'm very happy with uh, we can do this. It's quite expensive, too. This this bus buck, uh, it was already pay, bought and paid for. We had to pay for it on top of that, so I'm going to... Gabriel, Abby, Kimmy, uh, Mike, Cheetahs have all shared in it, so I'm going to pay my share, probably a little more. I think it's like 35, 3800 uh, rand, which is about 200 bucks. It's a lot for a small antelope. This antelope is probably more, no more than about 100, maybe, maybe 180, 200 pounds, maybe. They're not all, they're not all edible either. It's mostly bone, you know, organs that had to be cut out. It's really good skin, the hair, it cleans the intestines. It's really good stuff good lipids in there there's 
really good. I get to share a meal with Gabriel here. I hold the bone for him. This loose piece of meat's, you know, it's hard to eat because she's she just only uses her. If you notice, he only he's only using his mouth, and jaws to eat this. You done, buddy? You done? Oh, there you go. Stretch out, buddy. Stretch out. All right, we'll take it back and give it to the. Uh, I might give it to another cheetah too. Yeah, good. He actually ate some of this, so, so I'm very happy about that. Uh, he's not a real fan of bust buck, but I think me, me in here holding it for him. Most of the carcass will be divided amongst the rest of the cheetahs. Nothing goes to waste. The rest will go to the lions and picked clean.